This is the day that the students, parents and teachers of Green School Bali have been waiting for. The Earth Day. Green School, believing in Bali, what we learn from this island we are passing along because we're children of the Earth. Boomy, boomy, we are God. For them, the Earth Day is not only celebrated once a year, but every single day of the year. The location of this school is far from Bali's crowded tourism spots. Here, all students from kindergarten to high school are being taught how to live in line with nature and to find solutions for various environmental issues. You know, issues of clean air, clean water, uh, sustainability issues, uh, food security, food safety. Um, and so, and these are topics that are not just unique to Green School. These are topics that are important to any government around the world. It's important to any, any, any school around the world. Green School Bali's general manager, Chris Thompson, explained that teaching methods in his school is totally different than any other public or private schools. They're just not reading about things in a book at a theoretical level. It's much more visceral and much more real. By experiencing it. Yeah, experience, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a given. Experiential learning is absolutely the best way to learn. And so much of the learning around the world is built around teaching for the test, and it's about giving children information and just filling their head. This school still teaches the same subjects like any other schools, such as Indonesian language, science, and also social studies. But there are some special subjects on environment, as taught by Glenn Shikering, one of the teachers for middle and high school level. What subjects do you teach here? I teach global awareness. Mm -hmm. What is it about? So global awareness, we focus on global issues around the world, and then, uh, and then look at their solutions, where, you know, where in the world, is this particular problem safe water access or deforestation a biggest, the biggest problem and what are some of the solutions out there? One of the tasks in Glenn's class is to bring a bucket filled with water, which brings the students to understand how some people in other parts of the world is lacking clean water. Uh, can you explain about that? Sure. About one billion people around the world who don't have access to safe drinking water. And, mm -hmm. and so as part of the challenge, what we did is to really be hands-on and really understand that we decided we were going to use a four-liter jug mm. to carry with us. Every All day. day. Every day. For and how, how well, long? Well, the challenge was to do it for up to 10 days. 10 days? Up to 15. And so we could only get our water from one particular source here on campus. Mm -hmm. So it's safe drinking water. And we had to use this jug to wash our hands, to brush our teeth, for all our drinking water. And then we could fill it up as much as we wanted. Mm -hmm. We weren't trying to deprive us of drinking water. But then you had to walk back up to fill it up. And you had to carry it around and use it to Mandy when you got home that night. Oh, so yeah. that's the only source of water they have all day. Correct. So and I would say we had, <laughs> we had 25 students in the class. And I think it's about 15 of them made it the whole 10 days. Learning by experience is conducted through various activities within or outside the classroom, like these students in the yard. This school also has a conservation for nearly extinct birds in cooperation with local non-profit organizations. So, the students are used to be directly involved in preserving the wildlife. Uh, kenapa memilih Green School dibandingkan sekolah-sekolah biasa pada umumnya? Well, Green School itu unik sekali karena kurikulumnya yang unik dan terus juga cara mengajar guru-guru di sini itu uh, luar biasa menurut saya karena langsung terjun praktek mereka mengajarkan sustainable secara praktek itu tidak hanya sekedar teori. Mahmud Yogi Prayoga, an Indonesian living in Bogor, West Java, has just enrolled his child in this school. 
the significant distance between Bogor and Bali is not a problem. Uh, bapak kan menyekolahkan anak bapak di sekolah yang berbasis lingkungan, begitu ya. Memang uh, apa yang ingin uh, bapak tanamkan uh, terhadap pemikiran anak bapak? Well, masa depan bumi ini semuanya ada di generasi penerus kita nanti, termasuk anak-anak kita nanti. Seperti kalian ketahui, sekarang dunia ini udah teknologi udah maju, semuanya serba instan dan dan saya rasa itu enggak sehat buat buat sustainable, buat kelangsungan bumi ini pun enggak sehat. Jadi kalau kita bisa dari sekarang mengajarkan ke anak-anak kita tentang environment, betapa pentingnya lingkungan kita. Yoga is not only parents coming from outside Bali wanting to enroll his child here. The 370 students in this school came from 40 countries, including Indonesia. One night up in Singapore, so we literally decided to pack up and move down here. And, um, and I have two children who are enrolled here in the school. One is seven and one is 11, and they absolutely just love, love the school here. So we've decided and you know, we're now living permanently here in, uh, in Bali. In this two-hectare facility, the students are accustomed to living a nature-friendly lifestyle, including by not consuming food infected by pesticide, but rather choosing organic food. The students are also relying on eco-friendly energy source, since 50% of the energy needed by the school is produced by solar panels. And not only that, the whole building and furniture of the school is made of bamboo, a long-lasting natural resource which is available abundantly if compared to wood. Well, as you see, we have no walls on and at Green School. And um, it's intentional. Really, um, it's, it's, it's a metaphor for when you, when you put walls on something, you're closing off. And most classrooms around the world, it's a square and it's closed off and there's not always windows and it's shut. You're closing off from, from the world. And, but also when you're doing that, you're closing off the mind. So here we see this as a metaphor for open doors, open walls, open, open minds. I wish I was still in high school. <laughs> well, you can come in and you can come in and have a, take a class with us. So with that, I'm going to call up your co-founder and my new friend, John Hardy to accept the award on behalf of the Green School. The learning methods and management of Green School Bali have made this school recognized as the greenest school in the world by Green Building Council in the United States of America. But that title didn't make these two students, Melati and Isabel, easily satisfied. Kita bekerja bersama dengan anak-anak lokal dan internasional di Bali dan coba melarang tas plastik di Pulau Bali. They want to spread the same concern over environment to the world. In just 11 and 12 years old, both of them have managed to make a campaign signed by over 50,000 people, which carries the goal of relieving Bali from plastic waste in 2015. So, uh, what is the solution if Bali uh, will be plastic bags. So we're thinking of using making cotton bags and we're taking old hotel sheets because hotels don't always like use the same sheets so we're thinking of getting the old hotel sheets and sewing them into bags and reusing them and we're also thinking of using cotton bags but also just recently last year a girl in Turkey found out a formula to make bags out of banana peels so we're thinking of getting in contact with her and seeing if that could be another alternative. So how that idea came into your mind? Well, really, we were um, learning this about significant people at school, like Nelson Mandela, Lady Diana, Martin Luther King, and we wanted to be significant people as well. And so we started now, because we didn't want to wait till we were old and stuff, so we started now. Okay. So at grade 7 and grade 6, you learn all about this. Yeah. In Indonesia, it's not only Green School Bali which have developed the concept of environmental-based studies. These schools are growing in numbers, as explained by the spokesperson from the Ministry of Education and Culture, Ibnu Hamad. 
Indonesia di masa depan itu membutuhkan decision makers yang pro lingkungan hmm. gitu ya. Bagaimana tanggapan Prof? Apakah sekolah-sekolah berbasis alam ini perlu diperbanyak begitu Prof? Di sekolah-sekolah negeri maupun swasta juga itu ada yang disebut dengan program adiwiyata. Dalam program adiwiyata itu ada kurikulumnya, ada penciptaan lingkungan yang berwawasan lingkungan, ada melibatkan partisipasi sivitas akademika di situ ada guru, karyawan, murid ikut mengelola dan aspek penilaian. There are more than 1300 schools in Indonesia conducting the Adi Wiyata program, inserting environmental education concept in every subject of studies. Saat ini bagaimana dengan tren pembukaan uh, green school atau sekolah-sekolah berbasis alam? Apakah lebih banyak peminatnya, Prof? Trennya semakin meningkat. Ini kenapa, Mbak Val? Karena tidak lepas dari kampanye penyadaran lingkungan e, dari e, berbagai pihak. Tentu saja e, core-nya ada di Kementerian Lingkungan Hidup. Tapi yang paling penting kan ada LSM juga kampanye, media terus-terus mendorong agar orang sadar lingkungan. Schools like Green School Bali have not thought the environmental preservation concept because of its raising trend, but they intend to create a new awareness and creating the leaders of the future. Our planet is home to countless microorganisms. Leaders who really care in preserving Earth aside from only focusing on economy. What kind of individuals Green School try to develop here? And at some point down the line, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, they're going to be sitting in a place where they're going to be making a moral or an ethical decision. Yes. You know, do we cut down this rainforest in Indonesia to be raising profit margins? Do we start this new development because it raises our profit margins? There's going to be something, no matter what company that they're in, and hopefully what they'll do, a little voice inside their head is going to say, this isn't right. It's not right. And they'll raise their hand and say, you know what? I think we should lose the profit margin on that business right now and let's do what's right.